All right, hello everyone again. This is Rubber Band, and what I'm going to be doing is basically just doing basic uh, cylinder service. So, this is a key and lever cylinder with operating key. Works just fine. It's an Everest. We can see our check pin down there. So, we're going to be taking this apart from start to finish. So, uh, strap in. So, the first thing that we're going to do is we have to remove the thread cap and tail piece. So there's a couple of ways we can do that. When I first started locksmithing, the thing that we used was this is a broken key extractor, but it's kind of thin, bendy, and it's got this really fine point, so you can kind of embed it into the, uh, the pin back here and move the thread cap around it. So it, uh, it works pretty well for that. As you can see, it, it worked pretty well right here. Um, that aside, I'm operating through the camera here. There's also this thread cap removal tool, which fits over the tailpiece. And you can just kind of spiral on. And see, all done. So if you're doing a lot of them, this tool really helps. So I'm gonna back it out again. So. I do it the same way every time when I serve a cylinder. So the first thing is I, uh, I pull the thread cap off. That goes in a spot. I usually make a cup out of it. And then what I do is I'll set the tail piece to the side. I don't normally use a pinning mat, but then I'll put this in the little cup and then I'll knock the spring out. So those tend to stay in one little group. So now I've got this apart here. And uh, the new modular style cylinders have this cutout that allows them to be converted to a bunch of different functions. Um, those usually need a special type of follower for the, the most ease of use. I'm not going to be using one of those. I'm just going to be turning it to basically uh, like 2 o'clock or so. So that way I can still use this ridge right here to guide the pins along and not have them fall into this ridge. So if I were to turn it full 90 degrees, which is how I normally do it, it would fall into here before the follower can meet. So anyway, follower. This is a Keydex uh, demastering follower. Uh, this one is really good because this ramp here allows you to uh, basically ream out a bunch of master pins if the cylinder was mastered. So, all right, so the key will hold in the check pin, so I don't have to worry about that coming out. So here we are. We have the follower in the shell, and we'll tuck that guy right up there. So we will keep our fingers down here to not lose our check pin. Pull the key out, and we're going to go, we're going to knock the pins out one by one. Filming around a camera when it's right in front of you is not the easiest thing, but the struggle is its own reward, I suppose. We're all in this cosmic journey together, and I'm doing work outside of work. For you, for you observers. All right. Okay, so got the check pin here. I have a tool. This is a plug holder and I'm going to go and tuck it in there. That way I'm not going to lose my check pin. That can hang out. I'm going to put it right up here so we can kind of keep it in frame. So we've got this and now um, what we are going to do is we are going to take all of the top pins out. These are all standard pins, nothing particularly special about it other than it is an Everest cylinder. 
which these days are kind of everywhere. So, trading places. Um, so it always behooves you to keep a finger over your work so that way things don't go flying past you. I kind of violated my own rule. Almost always I'm following this rule, but I didn't because I got a little cocky, I suppose. Oh, okay, there we go. I was really curious as to where my top pin had gone, but it was stuck to the actual shell. All right, and final pin. Yeah, the spring is stuck. All right. So, those are the pieces parts of a cylinder. Here we have our shell, our tail piece, thread cap, uh, cap pin spring in here, and this is the cap pin itself. Springs go in the Bible. These are top pins, and these are bottom or key pins. And on Everest cylinder, this bad boy is a check pin, and it's basically a, uh, a hoity-toity anti-pick measure, but there's ways around that. Pretty popular ones these days. So, this is the general cylinder anatomy. You know, some of them will have extra things like sidebars or sliders or a myriad of other things that make them special. But this is about as, base, as basic as it gets. Pardon my speech impediment. So, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it back together. So, check pins toward the back. So here's the front of the cylinder. So if we can see here, so the holes right there what I do when I service these is I put all the springs in first. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm using Labs pinning tweezers. They have a curled tip that allow for easy gripping of the small parts that go in cylinders. So again, please excuse my terrible lighting. I really need to find a better place to film other than my dining room table. but. In the absence of the perfect tool, use the tools you have. And I have this. And uh, I guess we at least have my sparkling commentary to carry us through. You can insert whatever amount of sarcasm you will with that statement. So, now I'm gonna take my follower and uh, so this is gonna be kind of a, an odd trick, but this is how I do it. So I take the top pin and I grab just the bottom of it with my pinning tweezers and I'm gonna insert it into the shell. And then I kind of hold it like this very, very delicately. And then I'm gonna butt this in there once it gets into the chamber hole there so you should be able to see that blurry sorry but since it's in that hole I'm gonna butt okay I'm going to butt the follower up against it and I'm gonna hold it in place using friction I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna push that pin down Heck up. And it flew out. All right. 
would you believe that I do this for a living? Because if I were you, I wouldn't. All right, we got it. Just had to do, uh, put the pin into electric boogaloo. So you'll notice I'm not putting the top pins in the order that they came out. That's okay because they're all the same. And in a land of all the same, I'm not gonna be losing anything by them going in in reverse order. The key pins, however, we will have to definitely put those the right way in. All right, so here we go, here we go. Moving right along, once I get the back pins in, this normally goes pretty darn quick, so. All right, so hopefully we can get some view here, all right. So, I'm going to push the spring down with the pin, and look, I'm pushing up against it with the follower. Hopefully that's a better focus. If you can't see that, I'll try to redo this video sometime with better lighting. So, all right, and here we, oh, all right, you can see that. I can even see it through the camera, okay. so. Push it down, followers through. So what I was uh, talking about with the master pins earlier, it's because they are much smaller. You can actually take this ramp and follow it through, and then all of the master pins would fall out onto this ramp, and then you would be able to dump them all out, and you wouldn't have to dump everything in the Bible to rekey a cylinder. You can just get rid of the old master pins, and then you don't reuse them, ever. Okay, there we are there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our plug and we're going to insert our key. Where did I put that key? There's the key. All right, so now we got that in there. We're gonna be able to test shear line before we put it back in the cylinder. So keep it from rotating. All right, so when I re-key, I always go bow to tip. That rule does not apply to small format IC, but we are that you don't rekey them like this, so that shouldn't matter. So, all right, next pins going on in. Please forgive my awkwardness. I am not used to doing this around a camera, but you observers. You've convinced me that you want to see this. All right. Um, if you are looking forward to my key machine videos, uh, I should be able to get those up sometime shortly. So the thing that I like about the plug holder is that we can test the shear line by turning before it goes into the shell. So that way I can go, oh, there's no clicking or popping. So that only tells me that there's no pins that are too tall. It doesn't tell me that there are pins that are too short. Uh, I can tell from here that there definitely isn't. Everything's gonna be fine. Everything's gonna be totally kosher. So put our plug holder up here. Keep your pins facing upward. Remember to avoid this ridge on these cylinders. So I'm gonna turn just so slightly to about two o'clock. And we're gonna guide our plug through. Test for turning. Okay, here's a, here's a fun trick. Okay, before you put everything on the back, if you wanna pull your key out, like I do, because I want it to all stay together, put your fingers up on the face of the plug and drag the key out via pinching. That way, you don't have your cylinder fly apart. Yay. All right, so next thing in the reverse order, we're gonna take our cap pin spring, put it in its proper chamber, put the cap pin on, put our 
tail piece on. Fun fact, you can tell what the cylinder is going to go into by its orientation. If it is vertical, in line with the Bible, it is going to go in a lever, because levers are sideways. If it is horizontal, like this, it will be going into a knob. So you can refer to these as either key and lever or key and knob cylinders. Just depends on your tailpiece. So I guess the actual tailpiece is what dictates its function. So I'm going to use my thread cap tool here and I'm going to spiral this on down. Okay, so there are these notches that look like a little flower kind of that basically dictate the tightness of the thread cap and this pin holds that in place. So you want to turn this as tight as possible and then usually you want to back off two to three clicks. If it's too tight, your key will drag. If it's too loose, it won't let your key come out because the plug will drift a little too far. All right. Everything's good. Turns all the way out. Pinch. Okay. Uh, the key's not in use, so I don't mind if you see the bidding. So, that's basic cylinder service. You could even call it 101. Um, in the future, I'll do some master keying instructionals and things of that nature. But for the most part, that's just how you rekey and service a Schlage Everest cylinder key in lever. So anyway, hope you enjoyed watching. Thanks. Go ahead and leave a comment, like, and subscribe below. If you like this video and want to see more like it, definitely watch all of the other really good locksporters and locksmiths that are out there on YouTube. So uh, thanks for watching, everyone.